creative friends, it's Gwen. It's time to pull out your craft punches and come create with me. I'm using five punches on a single layout. Let's get started. Here's a look at the punches that I'll be using on today's layout and I have pulled out Simple Stories Wildflower Collection. I'll be documenting this recent photo of my daughter and here's a look at the completed page. I'm going to start the layout in my usual way and create a border for the page. This one is a little bit different though because usually I would match the photo mat to the outer edge of the layout. This time I'm mixing things up and I'm going to use a different print. I wanted to show you this because usually I would recommend that those two elements match. It's a really easy hack to get a consistent look, but it doesn't mean you always have to do it that way. What I am going to do is bring that pattern paper into the center of the layout in a different way. But first, I need to show you this. This is punch number one for today's layout and I am not just punching round circles with it. I'm going to use it to create some layered elements for my background. I've cut a strip of paper that is exactly the same width as this circle, which is two inches. And then I thread the paper through the punch so that I can create a rounded edge on the end. I'm going to end up adding three of these but this first one you'll notice is the perfect match to the frame for the layout. I'm going to be sure to incorporate this early so that I can get that consistent look. On to the next punch and it is also a circle one but it is much smaller. I'm going to use it to take a notch out of this next paper layer. I'm just adding interest here and what will end up happening is I'll create a little bit of a pocket for the left hand side of my layout. One of the easiest ways that you can get more use out of your paper punches is by just adding a punch here or there within your paper layers. Adding these seemingly small details can really make the page look more complicated than it is. I've used this collection quite a bit now, so I do have quite a few paper scraps and strips and bits and pieces, and I am actually just working with those to create a lot of the layers here. And if you're ever looking for any of the supplies or tools that I use, be sure to check the description box below. So let's talk layout design. This one is going to be quite linear. I am just going to stick with all of these paper strips that I'm working with and build things up from there. Now at this point, nothing is stuck to my background and I have a reason for that. If you've been watching for a while, you will have probably guessed why. I'll get to that further on in the video. First of all, we need to use some more punches. I'm going to mix and match prints for this layout. I did find a striped paper that I'm gonna use in the background there. And then there was this really pretty pink check or gingham print. And I'm going to use my edge punch to just decorate one edge of this paper. This is one of my favorite punches because I feel like it's never going to go out of fashion. It's the kind of punch design that will work on so many layouts. I'm going to add that into my paper layers using my tape glider. And then as I position this, I realize it was ever so slightly too long. So I am just going to trim off the smallest amount off of that top edge there. I do really like to have my paper layers sitting really close together. So I'm going to trim this one just a little as well. That's better. See how they sit together much more closely now? It's time for another punch. And this one is similar to a corner rounder, but instead of just making the corners basic and round, it actually adds this really pretty decorative detail. I'm going to use it on this paper as well, and that's going to help the page feel consistent because I'm repeating elements. If you ever add an element to a layout and it feels a little bit out of place, don't be super quick to discard it. I would suggest you actually repeat it first and then if it still feels out of place, then maybe go a different route. But often just by repeating elements, you can help them to really feel as if they were meant to be part of the page. Here's a good example. I added that little piece of pattern paper there and it didn't feel quite right. It seemed a bit blocky. 
all I needed to do was repeat that technique that I used with the punch and it just feels so much more consistent now with what's already on the layout. I used this idea when I was selecting the punches for the page as well. Notice that they all have a similar round feel to them. That is not by accident. The bones for the layout are now in place so we can get on to the pretty embellishments. I'm going to go with two floral clusters and I found this bow. I'm all about them bows so we need to find a place for it. Here's a look at the next punch I'll be using and this one I wanted to use as an embellishment piece. I knew I wanted to add some floral clusters to the layout so why not add in some extra little punched out leaf shapes. So for this layout I'm going to work on two embellishment clusters. The first will be the smaller one which will be in the top right hand corner of the photo. The second cluster will be on the left hand side and it will fill the front area of that pocket. I'm going to squeeze in my title there on the left as well. So for the clusters I am going to work largest elements to smallest and I am going to start with a couple of large floral pieces. I do have to audition things quite a lot. Often it's really just a matter of me testing out everything until I'm happy. Things are getting serious because I'm gluing stuff down. I really like how that top cluster nestles into the corner there. And the bottom left hand one is looking good too. I am going to lock in the position of the bow. And a reminder that none of this is actually attached to my background yet. So I am thinking at this stage that I need to vary the size of the embellishments that I'm using. Everything that I have used so far is quite big. And do you know what goes perfectly with florals? Butterflies, of course. So I'm going to find a couple to add to the layout and then I'm going to look for some smaller leaf elements that I can use to fill out these floral clusters. The leaf punch that I know that I want to use is actually quite small and I've struggled in the past to match it with florals that have really large leaves. So I need to bridge that gap. I need to have a really big mix of sizes in the leaves to make it seem like they fit. You'll see here the ones that I'm adding now are a fair bit smaller than the ones that came on that original die cut. The ones in my punch will be slightly smaller again. Okay, so it's time for my title and this photo was taken on the day that my daughter got her L plate, her learner's permit to drive. So I thought this little sentiment here, wild and free, would be a perfect fit. This is the first step for her towards getting her driver's license and all the freedom that comes with that. It's so exciting for her. It's quietly terrifying for me. This is the season that I find myself in so it is best to enjoy it for what it is and it's always so nice to document these memories. I was really struggling with the placement of these leaves and I couldn't figure out why until I realized that that particular print that I had punched them out in, I haven't used that anywhere else on the layout. So going back to my idea of repeating things, I thought, you know what, let's repunch them out of a similar print to what I've already used. And that made all the difference. They were standing out far too much in that other pattern paper. With this print, they kind of blend together and they blend with the rest of the layout, which is exactly what I want. I wanted to share this with you because because there would have been no position on the page where those leaves would have looked good. And it wasn't because the leaf was the wrong shape or it was the wrong element. It was just cut in the wrong pattern paper. I've also tried to find a couple of round embellishments to tie in with those round elements from the punches. So I did find a little sentiment that says smile. I found just a really pretty leaf um, circle element, it's just decorative. And I am going to use this cute little round heart. And I think it's time to add to our background here. Now this is just a plain white piece of American Crafts cardstock. So I'm going to add some mixed media. I am so thankful to the creative friends who've helped me along my mixed media journey. This whole concept, this idea of building the top part of the page first and then adding the mixed media, it came from you guys. I read and reply to every comment on the channel and I am so thankful for all your tips and tricks and advice. You really are the best. 
So I'm using Distress Oxide and I have this happiest color of yellow, fossilized amber, I think it's called. And I'm going to just blend it out very gradually towards the outer edge of this stencil. As a beginner, this is my favorite way to add mixed media to layouts because I've got so much control over where the ink's going to go. I love that I don't have to gesso my page and adding the ink this way, the paper just stays perfectly flat. There is no warping at all. And how pretty does that look? I love how the yellow fills in that empty space in the background and look how perfectly positioned it is all because I had built that top layer first. It's looking great. I do want to add a couple more things though, because what we don't have at the moment is texture. To fix that, I'm going to add a couple of round brads that come from the collection. I've also added two little tab elements. They've been punched out with a tab punch and I'm gonna lift them up and try and make them a little bit layered as well. The brad elements are a good choice because they add a different texture. They're made of like metal and acrylic, but they are round. So they are consistent with all those other round elements that I've added to the page. And here's a look at all the close-up details. Thank you so much for being here, my creative friends. If you like the way that I scrapbook or the way that I chat about the way that I scrapbook, I would love it if you give this video a thumbs up. If you're looking for even more ways to use your craft punches, be sure to watch this video next. It's full of tips, tricks, and ideas that I'm sure you will love. Thanks for being here, my creative friends, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, bye.